So today we're going to look at patch 11.5 the patch notes. We're going to be making some decks with these cards and I'm excited to see what got changed because I see good old uh, Bork 3 Jackdaws here whose name I can't actually pronounce. But we'll figure it out but uh, hopefully he's getting some change. All right. Let's see what we've got. A new keyword. That's interesting. Lineage. At the start of the game, boost self by the number of dragons in your starting deck. Thank goodness. I've been... This is something I've been uh, advocating for for a while. It's actually to make the dragons into a little tribal archetype. So you make a dragon deck. I think I've mentioned this several times, but I'm very... <laughs> this has to mean you can make a dragon deck, which means I'm very excited. Uh, you're going to make a... If you're making a dragon deck, you have Keltalus and Monsters, and then you have... Synthesis and Saskia and Saskia Commander in Skoya Tells. You've got a couple dragon options there. I'm wondering how many cards would get this keyword, but I guess we can just look. New Defender VFX when selecting target defender on the row. It will highlight it. I like that. That's good. All right, neutral changes. Another dragon I can't pronounce. We'll figure this out by uh, the time they could dragon deck and record it. Right now we're just reacting to the patch. I didn't know this was going to be here, so we couldn't look up how to pronounce it. Uh, we've got power from 5 to 4. Okay, sure. Provision from 7 to 12. Okay, what we got? Lineage. So this power change is like a lower power, but we're probably getting 3 or 4 uh, power on the lineage. So it's probably like an 8 or a 9. It's probably more like an 8. Maybe a 9 if you're playing uh, Squiatel. So deploy, draw a dragon. Okay, that's really good. With a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. So this is probably playing for 8. It's drawing you one of your other big cards. I'm assuming they're all going to be big cards still. And, yeah, that's just really good. Order damage aimed by 1, charge 0. At the start of the game, set chargers number to match your lineage. So say you've got 4 dragons, you've got 4 lineages. This is an 8 that draws you another one of your big dragons. Then does 4 damage on charge, on 1 damage charge. That seems quite good. And it is 12 provisions, so it's going to be really expensive. But it seems like a card you're going to have to include in the dragon decks for consistency. I think it's pretty good. I'm very excited to try the dragons. The dragon deck is probably something I've been advocating for for the longest. When I first started playing, went like, you know, after Homecoming. And then they released um, Thronebreaker with uh, Ike. And that was like, when Ike was actually playable, the dragons was one of my favorite times in Gwent. So I'm glad to see they're getting some love. I wonder if Ike's going to changes. He's probably just good with this. Anyway, Ockfist. We made an Ockfist Discussion Day video at some point. And I think in that also we mentioned dragons needing a change to work together. But we got 10 to 12 provisions. Ability change to lineage. The timer 3 here still damage all enemy units by 1. So that's nice. I think I said this in the uh, Oculus videos that you can keep the abilities to give them something else. Of the deploy. And we got deploy spawn cataclysm for 2 turns. That's good enough for me. So 12 provisions. The lineage means he's probably playing for a 10. Well, close to a 10, right? He's a 6. Yeah, if you've got four dragons, he's playing for a 10. I think there's four neutral dragons. I might be wrong about that. I think there's four. But yeah, so 10. It puts Cataclysm out for two turns. Damage all by one at timer three. Seems really good to me. Quite good. Roach. Oh, this is a big... This is a huge change. Roach from nine to ten. All those Golden Necker decks. That's a big hit to all the Golden Necker decks. You lose a Consistency card, and you lose an Early Tempo card. It's probably warranted because Gold Knuckers gotten kind of too prevalent and too consistent. But this, this actually is a really big nerf to them. Can't run Roach. Ooh, that's a kind of a big deal. Another Dragon Synthesis Blaze. Power from five to one. Also twelve provisions. Are these all twelve provisions? Twelve, twelve, twelve. That's thirty-six provisions. That's really expensive. Ability to change you. So lineage it, with lineage, it probably goes back to a five. So I wouldn't worry about this being a nerf. And then while in hand deck or on the battlefield, whenever enemy unit is destroyed or banished during your turn, boost self by one. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you're playing, if you go up against a token based deck, and you're playing stuff like Aquavis, you've other damage that just kills a whole bunch of tokens. This can be insane because it counts banished, and the tokens having doom banish themselves. So this should still get a trigger from it. Let's just say it's not the case. Just say you kill 10 guys during the game. That gives you a 15. It's a pretty decent finisher. You're going to have to be playing a control deck, I guess, with this. Uh, I wonder... This seems like it works well with Keltalus, though. 
Yeah, these seem like they could be really good in a Keltalus deck. You know, if it's a Keltalus deck without Witch's Sabbath, I really don't care. <laughs> the Witch's Sabbath is the only part of that deck. This is interesting. I think this will be a pretty big finisher, but it's going to really want to make you play Control. And if you're really playing Control, I don't think you can play Sassy Commander with these, because that pulls units out of your deck. So that kind of eliminates that option, which is fine with me. Villain, Tret, and Merith. Definitely pronounced that wrong. Provisions from 11 to 13. Okay, so if we're running all four of these, we're up to 49 provisions, right? That's expensive. So he's got Lineage, which means I think he's a 5 now. So it should make him a 9. That's quite big. Timer 3 destroy the lowest... Our highest power unit on the battlefield, excluding dragons you control, so you can't kill your own guys. Yeah, these seem like they go really well. And that Keltilus type deck where you play very few units. I like this. This guy's really cool. I've always liked this ability. And just the fact that you hit your own guys was really too much of a downside to warrant. But coming down as a 9, the lineage helps so much because it lets your guys live. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I may not sound like it because it's really late where I am, but I am very excited to try these out. Without them making a dragon deck. Monsters. Assets from 8 to 6. Yeah, when I made the uh, Kiki Moore deck and reviewed the cards, I, th I thought this sounded weak, but it has a very good upside. It just it costs too much for what it does. So I'd like this change. And remove the melee on Kiki Moore Worker. Yeah, I, I don't know why that was. I mean, I knew why it was there originally, but it doesn't make sense anymore. Coral from eight, 9 to 8 provisions. Alright, I'm just going to throw this out here. I don't know the answer. But I feel like Coral's the most changed card in the game. And if it isn't, it has to be close. Because you had the original Coral. Well, you had Coral, then you had Coral with the Zeal Order. And then discard a special with Sacrificial Vanguard. You had the two discards. Then she got nerfed. and Yeah, she has to be like the most changed card in the game. I mean, this is obviously a buff. And it's a buff to the discard package, Skellige. Which I guess hasn't been seeing as much play lately. So I guess that's warranted. But <laughs> it's just funny seeing Coral get changed again. Dagger 2 plays 10. Oh, 10 to 9. So we got a big nerf to Golden Necker Siri Nova. With the Roach hit, we can play Dagger in it. We might try something out with this. Dagger is really cool. Alright. Dire Bear is a VFX when it blocks a boost. That's cool. Kraken. A Death Wish ability changed. Okay. The end of turn summons self the opposite row and boosts self by the number of unique allied beasts. So it moves from Death Wish to Death Wish end of turn. There has to be an interaction with this that was getting messed up. But I don't know what it is. But I'm guessing... Oh, I just saw the next change. Hold on a second. Magic Compass 9 to 10. That's pretty much the end of, of Skellige Golden Necker. I don't see how it works. That's, that's such a big nerf. I mean, this, the Skellige Golden Necker is one of the best decks in the game, but. I mean, this kind of. 9 to 10 on Magic Compass. Ooh, that's a big hit. I guess they want you to play it with. So the Coral buff makes up for this. If you're playing a discard deck. Well, I think I guess they intended Magic Compass to be in a discard deck, which I I kind of suspected when I played it and not just the Golden Necker hyper thin. But man, Golden Necker and Skellige, no Magic Compass, no Roach. Ooh, I don't I don't think you can really play it. <laughs> I feel bad for the rain deck we made lately. But uh, that's a huge nerf. Like that that might be the biggest nerf. Like this patch. I think I'm like the biggest nerf of the last patch too. This is such a big nerf. But uh, I, it's probably warranted. But I mean. Some of the best decks in the game are Golden Necker, right? Like the best decks. You got this one. And then you have the Bounty one. The Bounty Golden Necker. And so, so, uh, Syndicate is also amazing. So I guess the best decks all being Golden Necker. They hit them both. With the Roach one that hit Magic Compass on this one. It'd be interesting if the uh, Syndicate one stays like the best deck in the game, even with the Roach hit. Northern Realms. Inspire Zeal, boost the U by 2. If it's non-neutral, give it Zeal. I guess they... It, it's Northern Realms. I guess they missed the leader. 
or inspired zeal when they went back and changed everything to non-neutral instead of um faction specific i think they said they did that for the arena draft whatever it's called but it's just a big buff to Nilfgaard. <laughs> just a big buff to Nilfgaard in the regular game mode. But yeah, this is fine. It, actually, this is a really big buff to Nilfgaard. If you make Inspired Zeal off of your uh, Ana Henrietta, you can now put it on stuff like Damien if you're running it. That's a really big buff to uh, Nilfgaard. Well, not really big buff, but like when you get it, it'll be much better for Nilfgaard. Okay. Drakenborg, I'm not, okay, if Drakenborg, if Drakenborg is completely killed, I will not be surprised. It's so uninteractive, and even though it's like a free win if you play Purify Heatwave, it's just so polarizing that I I can't imagine they leave it alone. I Like, I can't imagine this being a one provision nerf. As we can see, there is a one provision nerf, but I, I imagine like killing it. Resilience, yep. Deploy summoning it from deck to this row and lock it. Oh, it doesn't remove the boost anymore. So it doesn't remove the boost from the unit. Kind of like that. So you can get out, you can pull out your um, dual card. Like, say you boost it on Sace. This isn't, obviously you're going to still want to boost your um, Sigi, but I'm just saying if you did. Well, it's just your Sigi. You pull your Sigi out. You get your Adanian Sneaker Service out. It purifies the Sigi. You Inspired Zeal it and use the order, and your Sigi is still like a 20. I think Drakenborg still good. And what's the order? Give Vitality. Okay, yeah. So giving Vitality. It's still a really big finisher. You're not, you're not stripping the buff anymore, but you can't reapply the buff. You're just giving Vitality. This is much more balanced. It's no longer if you don't have a heat wave for Drakenborg, the game's over. As, and it's also not if you play Drakenborg and they heat wave it, the game's over because you lost all the boosts. This is much better for both sides. Like, well, much more fun for both players, I would say. Because you're not getting completely screwed out of the game if you can't remove it. And if they remove it, you're not getting completely screwed out of the game because you lost all your boosts. So, this is much more fair. Square tail. Correctness. Oh, I can't pronounce this thing. Origin cost 13 to 11. Ooh, okay. It's finally time to try this out. I've been thinking about making this deck for a long time. I never got around to it because it just seemed like it was too expensive. But at, th at 11, yeah, it's probably justifiable. We'll be trying some of this. Saskia. Oh, please fix Saskia. I've been waiting so long for this. Power change from 5 to 6. Sure. Uh... Okay, we're getting the same tokens, but they're not getting effects. So, like, the Deadeye doesn't do two damage, the Dwarf doesn't get plus three, the Dryad doesn't get the, uh, what does it get? The Vitality. Instead, Saskia herself gets an order. So, you spawn an Elf, you get Wele. Okay, I like this. This is really good. Really cool. Rowdy Dwarf gives you Tempering, and Drilling Dryad gives you Dryad's Caress. This is so flexible. I, I like this change. I've been really waiting for Saskia to get some love. Because I used to really enjoy playing Saskia. I, I, there's at some point I made a Harmony deck with Saskia. And like when she was still like terrible. And uh, just relied on playing Saskia plus like Call of Harmony round 3 or something. It was interesting. But I'm really glad to see this. So we get one more point here. This is probably worth 6, probably worth 5, probably worth 6 if you get the Vitalities. This is one more point. Actually, Rowdy Dwarf's less points. He gets the armor in this case. So the highest value one is the Lele. So let's say you make my Lele get 6. You get 9 points right away, and the order gives you an additional 6. That's 15 for 11. Yeah, it's pretty good value. I'm not sure if she fits in Harmony still, even though she has Harmony. She's a dragon. Maybe we can make her work with new dragon cards. That'd be interesting. But yeah, this is pretty cool. It's, it's nice to see her get a change. It definitely makes her better. Saskia Commander, power from 4 to 3 provision cost changed. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Power 4 to 3 is really big. So at 3 power, the um, Cataclysm. If you spawn Cataclysm on a row, she's just dead. Okay. That's actually kind of a big deal. 
against like Madoc decks, and then yeah, mostly against Madoc decks, you play Saskia Commander, you get something out, they bomb it, get their Madoc out. If they then trigger the Madoc and bomb your card you played, they guarantee Saskia Commander dies. That's kind of interesting. Well, it's it's obviously a nerf. Saskia Commander is completely ridiculous. And has been for a long time. So one provision makes sense. And then also this. Uh, this really just makes the Cataclysm do more damage. There's also the Skellige card that puts out Cataclysm with the Death Blow that Onslaught always plays. The Corsair guy. So you can like put the Corsair out. So they play Saskia. They summon something out. You put the Corsair Death or Infused on them. Hit it with the leader. Hit it with leader twice or whatever. And kill it. So... This definitely hurts Sasuke Commander, but she's really good. Welcome Defender. So it's got Barricade instead of the boost. I like this quite a bit. It makes it much, much easier to fit in Dwarf decks, which is where I would have liked to see it all along. So I've just make it with the Convergence, with the Squirtel scenario, so it can actually boost itself. Interesting changes. Nilfgaard, Combat Engineer, no longer Soldier. Uh, is this the guy that gives all those en siege engines or siege machines in your deck a charge? It might be. Manganel, ability change, zeal order. Damage an enemy unit by one. If you're spawning units adjacent to it, decrease the damage by one. Okay. Um, we're going to pull up the library real quick. Got to check something. This is the one they changed before, right? Like this. This is almost like a reversion of what it was. All right, well, um, let's see. Manganel, CJ, whenever you can spawn damage, you just use... Yeah, I think this one got changed before. But, uh, yeah, so now what it does, damage enemy by one, respawning you use change would increase the damage by one. Okay. It's got one... Ch oh, back to charge. Didn't they take away all the Nilfgaard charges before? And then Engineer is the one that gives them all a charge in your deck, I think. Which will be good synergy with this. Yeah, give one charge allied machines in hand deck on the battlefield. Kind of cool. I I did like the charge stuff in Nilfgaard. I, I guess they t I think they took it away to make charges sort of a Northern Realms thing, but I, I liked having it in Nilfgaard. This makes sense. Charge two instead of one. I wonder if you can just make a siege type Northern or Nilfgaard deck yet. Only one charge is kind of sketchy. But it theoretically can do three damage right away. I guess if it does two damage, which shouldn't be hard, and then you have the engineer, so it has two charges, that's quite good. That's eight for four. And then it's four damage. Yeah, that's pretty good. The Rot Tosser order, spawn and play a cow carcass. Charge one. Oh, Rot Toss are getting orders. There's a time when Rot Tosser is a card I like to run. It's it's just really fun to play Rot Tosser and put the car, cows out. I always thought it was a very cool card because it's the opponent interactivity, right? The opponent can decide if they want to put something between the carcass and their big card, or if they just want to let it go off, or if maybe they want to play a control card on their own cow carcass so it doesn't go off. You can purify it. It's just really neat. They're not purify, you can lock it. So I really like the cow carcass. And now we can make extra charges with Combat Engineer. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a deck here. It'll be fun. I don't think it'll be great, but it'll definitely be fun to try out. Syndicate. Blood Money. Okay, so this is the big deck, right? The Bounty deck. The Bounty Golden Necker. We've got a nerf here. Provisions. Casimir. We made a lot of Casimir decks last patch. Profit 3. Oh, that's really... Oh, that's a really big buff. Hold on a second. So Casimir just gets an extra three on top of his value. Yeah, that's really good. It was quite annoying with Casimir. You'd have to get coins out to boost him. Because at six, he really didn't do like get all that big. And you'd have to use coins on him. And also, if you had no coins, Casimir, you'd play him and wouldn't get an explosive. So this is really helpful. Just adding Profit 3 to a card is really good. I'm curious if there's a nerf to him somewhere. Doesn't look like it. So yeah, this is really big buff to Casimir. We're going to still be trying him out then. Madame Louisia, VFX the Order, sure. Bank, oh, Bank 9 to 10. Okay, they're hitting uh, both the big Golden Necker decks. So, you can't play Bank and Golden Necker. Good luck with that consistency. 
then profit from three to four. So giving it a point or a coin, change for the provision. Yeah, golden necker decks, it seems like they're really after, which I think a lot of people would not mind. Yeah, so you, you can't play Roach or Bank in the Golden Necker Bounty, and you lost the provision. So you lost your only consistency card other than Decree. I think they played Decree. And then the Skellige Golden Necker lost Magic Compass and also Roach. Yeah, big nurse to Golden Necker there. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, this is a change to Casimir. It's explosive, so I didn't catch it. Damage from 2 to 3. Fee from 2 to 3. So over time, you get the same value back. But it takes longer. I don't hate this. 3 damage is good. Like The next turn, it's a 3 for 2. Like Going from 3 three for 2 versus 2 for 1 is obviously much more efficient for the 2 for 1. But 3 damage is it's pretty significant. At 3 damage... You can play this and just like pretty much anything with the deployed damage effect will take care of whatever you put it on. Helps out with bounty. With the extra three profit, it should be easier to keep them alive without wasting all your coin leader charges if you're playing leader charges to give you coins. Yeah, I like this. It makes sense. It gives you less more time to his value, which makes sense with him getting this buff here. And then Oxenford Guard has the soldier tag. Sure, I kind of thought it was weird who's only a human. Fixes. Hansel no longer has cooldowns to artifacts, sure. Sandor no longer shows the player's deck. Oh, it showed the deck in order? That's a... This is like the third time this bug has happened. Where when they add a card and it looks at the deck, it shows it in order. I think it's maybe the second time. I know for a fact Dead Man's Tongue did too. <laughs> it seems like a recurring issue. Good thing they changed that. I didn't know that. That's a huge deal though. And backup plan specifies, so this is the text change. The card remains the same. Very interesting patch notes. I'm so excited for the dragons. It's like Golden Necker, Siri got big nerfs. And we'll uh, definitely be trying out some dragons. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found something interesting. Let me know what you think about the changes. Which cards are you most excited for? What decks do you want to see? If you know why the Kraken was changed, like what the interaction there was, because there has to be a reason for this, let me know. And we'll see you in the next one. That'll be it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. And you can check out some more videos over here. And thanks for watching.